Welcome back um, to Frost Shroud. I've been fiddling with the settings, trying to fix some of the technical, difficult, technical difficulties. Um, I'm still hovering around 9 frames per second. Um, I turned off the advanced open GH. Yeah. The. This thing. Advanced open AGL or open GL and turned it off. I've turned it on. I can't tell very well whether it's helping or not one way or the other. Got the graphics on fast. I've set render distance to normal. At first I thought it made everything a lot better and the frame rates per second shot up to like 20 something and now they're back down to 7, 13, 12, 11. Ugh. I've had a lot of te technical difficulties trying to fix these videos and make them look more decent. Uh, I've got to rearrange my stuff after I die, tragically. Um, got surprised by two zombies at once and had to walk back here. And where is here? Well... I found that uh, the wind effect is a bit disruptive to my voice, so I've uh, taken a try to avoid it when I'm talking. Um, basically, what you saw out there was a Tagia at, or I know that's not how it's pronounced, but whatever, I keep calling it Tagia. The pine forest biome that went at night with a heavy winter storm blowing through here. I'm about a day's walk to the west of the tower site. Um, to shut up zombie in order to try to find uh, some wolves because wolves only spawn in forests so I'm out here. The reason why I'm trying to get wolves is because better than wolves tech tree uh, at a certain point requires uh, tanned leather to proceed further. Um, and to get tanned leather, you need dung, specifically wolf dung, uh, to act as a tanning agent in the mixture with uh, the leather from cows to create tanned leather, which you can then use for things like belts and straps, which are required to make things like the saw block, which hopefully I'll show soon. I've actually gotten a lot done, but thanks to technical difficulties ranging from echo reverb on my microphone to crappy frame rate to static, um, I basically had to toss out all that footage because it just got so, God, shut up zombies. Uh, it got so bad that the quality was just awful. So I had to delete it. So here we are. I have basically made it down to bedrock, mine some diamonds, um, managed to build a, a portal to the nether, traveled to the nether, build a, a kind of fortress there, and just set up the windmill, along with some a little bit of grinding. And I managed to construct the... Um, mostly I'm just waiting for daybreak. I managed to construct the... Uh, a part of the first floor of a tower. Um, its radius is a 16 block radius, which, you know, makes it um, quite large. And uh, I think it was a 16 or 20 block radius. I can't remember off the top of my head now. But basically, I've completed half of the first floor of the tower right now, and I've begun moving or moved my materials up to what's going to be a kind of workshop hall. And there's a uh, gardens, sort of, um, in a nearby room that's serving for hemp production. And when we get back there, I'll be able to show you the various things like the light block in action and how I've set up the farm and other things like that. But for now, I just wanted to get in here and get an up, give an update. And wait for the dawn. 
you're probably wondering why I'm not making use of beds. One of the things that uh, Better Than Wolves added recently was um, what's been nicknamed hardcore bed or hardcore bedding or whatever. <laughs> Various puns, yes. Or dirty jokes, I guess, actually. But it doesn't matter. But anyway, um, yeah, beds are basically decorative now. You can't sleep in them. Um, this was done basically in an attempt to go back to the earlier kind of golden days of early Minecraft in which day and night and weather really mattered in the sense that with the beds in place you can basically just skip the night or skip bad weather um, unless it's daytime um, and then when that happens you can basically skip part of the danger and challenge of nighttime Minecraft and these types of things. Oh, look at Staybreak. Get out of my face, sheep. I don't want you here. Out of my face. So, let's see. We've got stuff. I'm picking up some spruce saplings so I can finally plant pines back where I came from when I get back there. Another day's travel back. Yeah, so as I was saying about the bed, it brings back a lot more danger to the game in some ways uh, or <laughs> perhaps a little bit of rage inducement because uh, when I died out here because I was assaulted by like two zombies which is why my inventory is kind of just like a mess out of order um, I got attacked when I was here by two zombies in the night and respawned a day's walk all the way back that way had to run back and get, manage to get all my stuff again. So I'll set out here looking for wolves. I'm going to climb up here. And, um, but despite that, you know, aggravation of, oh crap, um, running back here to get my stuff, betting has proved, or the hardcore betting mode, or the addition of hardcore betting, um, has created a kind of interesting change for the gameplay. Um, at first, yeah, it can be kind of frustrating, but oftentimes it returns this sense of, um, you know, the weather is something more than just an annoyance. It actually is a meaningful aspect of the game. You have to take into account strategically things like day and night and, and harsh weather and plan things accordingly. Do mining at night, do uh, daytime stuff in the daytime while you can where it's safer. And it makes the day and night matter. Um, which having the bed in game kind of, you kind of lose that a little bit. Well actually a lot. Because with the bed in game allowing you to just sleep through the night it really just makes the day and night cycle an annoyance or bad weather an annoyance but you just sleep through and it's fine and that takes away a lot of the challenge from the game um i think or at least a lot of the the ways in which the environment of the game day or night uh or placement of water just or whatever it when things get made easier that way it means that there's a loss of needing to use strategy in the same way. Um, you know, calculated risks and all that. Here, wolves, where are you? So, yeah, I mean, it improves that because it requires a new kind of strategy choices when you're... Any wolves down here? No. Uh, re requires a new kind of uh, strategy of choices uh, when approaching the game. And that makes it kind of really refreshing and new in a lot of ways. Um, similarly, the fact that you can't sleep in the bed now and that is purely decorative also means you can't change your spawn. Your original spawn becomes fixed and you can't just change your spawn so you can just have it be any old place you want it to be so if you die you get right back there. Um, I believe Flower Child did this in part 
to bring back the value of ah here we are to bring back the value of come back here uh, mine tracks and mine carts that once upon a time before the bed was introduced uh, mine carts and mine tracks were important as a means of transportation they allowed you to um, get from place to place quicker and faster and uh, with the bed that became less of an issue in terms of returning to get your stuff or returning back to an earlier site that you were at now it makes it more worthwhile to actually go through the trouble of building a track system to get back to somewhere else that you're going to be working on a lot uh, because it matters in terms of your spawn point now and so that's yet another way I think Flower Child is trying to encourage um, added complexity and depth to the game rather than just well, making it easier. Uh, let's see. Well, since I now have the two wolves I need to at least get the ball rolling, I can go ahead and head back. So let's see what time is it. What's my watch saying? It's about mid-noon. Probably make it if I push it. I don't know. On my way back, what I'll probably end up doing is uh, killing a lot of wildlife with the wolves, basically, as a means of getting them well fed. Um, one of the interesting things that's changed is that uh, wolves will now eat meat that's just dropped on the ground. Um, when you do this, they'll, you know, fill up their hunger. See, when they're hungry, they'll whine, and their tails will ultimately get lower, just like as if they're injured, because feeding heals them, I believe. And um, when you feed them, it also, well, produces dung. Not immediately, it's about a day or so later, roughly. And it's random, and it also kind of gets, the poo gets spawned kind of in a random place nearby. So you have to kind of keep an eye out for it, or else build a setup, which I will do later, to house the wolves in such a way to collect the dung. Uh, yeah, the wolf is whining right now because it wants food. So, and if I feed them meat directly, they'll mate, of course, and produce new wolves. Um, but if I just drop the meat on the ground, they'll just eat it to refill their health if they're hungry at all. If they're not hungry at all, they won't pick up the meat in the first place. Let's see. I'm at the edge of the biomes. What can I see? Uh, I think I'll just collect some more pine trees and head back. So you'll see me again when I finally get back toward the tower. Um, so this has kind of been an update here about what's been going on and hopefully fixing, trying to fix some of my technical difficulties. Get in here. Get, get in here. Another nice thing he adds is that, that while they do teleport in terms of following you like normal, if you make them sit, they'll stop teleporting around and following you. They'll just stay put. And they won't teleport you even if you're in a fight. Well... I'll be back. <laughs>